What's up guys, Fahan here and welcome back to another review. This is the review of the BMW CE04. Huge thanks to BMW Motorrad Singapore, Performance Models Limited for borrowing me this bike for the review. Alright guys, welcome back to the city of Bedini <laughs> And today of course we have the BMW CE04 Okay, weather doesn't seem too good because it's like it's gonna start raining I've been hearing thunder around me uh, for the past few minutes since I'm here But whatever it is, we're still gonna proceed the review Okay, so anyway, this of course whew, Our very first ever electric motorcycle review the BMW CE04 Before we get started, just share with you guys some facts and a bit of background on the CE04 Okay, so this bike is actually BMW's second electric motorcycle The first one is the CE Evolution But it was never brought to the Singapore market Meaning that the CE04 is the first ever electric bike motorbike being sold to consumers in Singapore and recently BMW launched the CE04 in Malaysia as well meaning that it's not a company bike it's not an R&D kind of thing or even a test bit consumers can actually purchase the BMW CE04 from BMW Motorrad now supposedly BMW intended the CE04 to represent the 400cc segment that's where the CE04 in the name is derived from actually however in Singapore because the electric motorbike riding classes is tiered according to power unfortunately you need to have a class 2 license to ride the CE04 as its peak generating power is 31 kilowatts okay so in Singapore 2 B is 15 kilowatts, 2A is 25 kilowatts, and class 2 is anything above 25 kilowatts. Whew, it's a lot of info we need to take in. Okay, eh? <laughs> yeah, oh, man, hope it doesn't rain too soon. Skies are clear, but it's getting cloudier. My weight of 230 kg. It's kind of heavy, but somewhat similar leaks in this class. As this is an electric bike, there's no fuel tank. It's 8.9 kilowatt per hour lithium battery. Has a recorded range of supposedly 130. But take note that this may vary. And range anxiety is really a thing on this bike. But let me explain why lah. In a moment as I'm riding it. There's a lot to cover. And I really hope that we cover everything. Okay, so starting up, pretty straightforward. Press the ignition, and you see the TFT gauge cluster lighting up, and you can see the battery's percentage, which is 64%. There's estimated 70 kilometers of range. Okay, so start up, make sure your side stand is up. Okay, press in either one of the brakes and push down the ignition. And there you go, the TFT gauge cluster changes to this, and you can hear somewhat. It's the sound of the fan being turned on But other than that, it's pretty silent, it's pretty quiet There's no idling sound, there's no starting sound whatsoever It's quiet So to write off, simply twist the throttle And you can feel the bike moving <laughs> Oh my god And there's this zoom sound that sounds very futuristic Which I really love Sounds very Jetson-ish Jetsons Kind of reminiscent of the Jetsons like that <laughs> Okay, so here comes all the future jokes <laughs> We're sending you back to the future The future So it's a riding experience like no other First of all, it handles very well Because of its awesome low center of gravity Because of the batteries packed is housed as low as possible taking in the corner going fast to the corner it really sticks and just provides that awesome handling and you feel really confident to go low but of course we're not going to do any crazy stuff with this bike as we're just doing a review on it Whew. okay <laughs> i have to say that yesterday i was running it i received a lot of looks from the people around me you cannot go wrong with the design uh. the design of the C04 is very distinctive it's very unique uh, it derives from the concept link scooter 
and I'm surprised that BMW mostly kept the design intact they did not do any major changes to the concept link to the CEO4 and most of its design elements stays other than making the bike road legal lah, with bigger headlights, side mirrors and rear tail tidy to house the license plate <laughs> Man, I can just feel the grip on this bike right now As you're leaning in the corner It feels kind of boaty Maybe it's due to it Rather obnoxious long width It's one of the longest scooters that I've ever ridden on Quite long ah. But it's something that we have seen before With the T-Max With the SRM Cruisim It doesn't sound crazy It doesn't look crazy But certainly the design is very futuristic To the point whereby People are like wondering What is this? Just now I actually ridden out 20 kilometers away Battery percentage was like 97% now only left 72 range may vary and the display also changes accordingly like maybe you're riding with the wind head on or if you're riding on the highway there's no start stop traffic or you're facing a bumpy road up ahead the range changes accordingly there's some range anxiety over there especially on such a bike and especially here in uh, Malaysia where the charging infrastructure is kind of lacking the range anxiety is always there at the back of your mind so it's always bothering me like i didn't really get to fully immerse myself in the ride of the co4 i'm just constantly worrying about the range of the bike can it make it even though you know that it can obviously finish this whole review in this session right now i didn't even realize that until i started riding the electric bike uh, because over here maybe in singapore it's still okay given that charging points are everywhere in the country even hdb flats like certain car parks multi-stories they have already installed them in but here in malaysia uh, you really have to keep a lookout in fact there's only like a few in the bandini area especially maybe in sunway big box and eco botanic that's all that's the only two that came up when i was searching for a charging point but I think if you are living in a landed property like mostly Malaysians do, especially in this area, you can straight away install a charging port at your house and just charge at home while you're sleeping and in the morning when you wake up, it's ready to go. Also with the lack of uh, an engine noise, <laughs> you tend to notice certain sounds that you don't really hear when you're riding a gasoline powered bike. You hear the engine noises of the vehicles around you, you hear chatter on the streets, you even hear the birds chirping the voices of the pedestrians around you talking and like wondering what the heck is this <laughs> some riders don't really like this because there's no fun it's no fun i mean you, you buy a bike to hear the engine sound but can your bike do this <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! that's very talky man that's very very talky oh my gosh and i'm not even using my brakes because of this regen thing the engine braking is considerably much uh, higher or uh, even more than what a gasoline powered a motorbike would typically be because of that when you're slowing the bike down it's like as if you're almost using the brakes but you're not so let's do something here ready go <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so can your bike do this i mean it's quite fast like 0 to 60 like two seconds is very talky but on the highway don't expect that kind of uh, top speed lah and besides you're gonna deplete your battery very quickly because this bike doesn't like to be on the highway like it's mostly suited for city riding start stop situations lane splitting slow riding you know why every time you stop the regen will feed back power into the battery so definitely it's going to be more efficient in terms of battery usage lah especially in city settings but if you're doing mostly highway riding touring it's really not suited besides its range of like 110 120 130 it's not gonna get you that far and you will constantly be worrying about the do i have enough juice to make it you know for some reason it's always at the back of my mind so suspension is really good really absorbs most of the road bumps and imperfections i think if you ask me it's very much fine it's much better than typically what a scooter suspension would be it's a cross mounted rear suspension also it's very comfortable based on the concept link ev the bmw ce04 
is the second fully electric battery-powered scooter after the BMW C evolution. The CE04 in its name represents the 400cc category of motorcycles it is intended to complement. Made in Berlin and fully developed by BMW, its transmission and powertrain is adapted from its line of electric automobiles and hybrids. Engine has a maximum output of 31 kilowatts. A liquid-cooled, synchronous, permanent magnet mid-mounted motor with a 8.9 kilowatt hour, 148 volt lithium-ion battery with a projected range of 130 kilometers. Being an electric scooter, and especially the first ever electric scooter that Tamba Overlanders is reviewing, every aspect of this bike is unique to its platform, and it's certainly nothing that I've ever personally seen in a gas power scooter. We certainly have a lot to talk about and I don't think that this uh, video is going to be as short as our usual ultimate reviews. Uh. So do bear with me for a bit. Okay guys, so before I sit on the bike, okay, just want to let you guys know that from my observation, this BMW CE4 is quite a long scooter. Uh. Its overall length is recorded at 2,285 millimeters or 90 inches. I think for me, it looks long. Maybe it's because it's thin. And then there's also this long bench seat over here, which is an unconventional design choice by BMW. But I think they wanted to make it look futuristic. Uh. It's somewhat Similar in length to the Harleys, the soft tails. Sitting on this bike right now, as you can see, okay. Oh. Wow, actually, yeah, uh, it's very comfortable. Okay, but I wish there's more padding <laughs> because I can feel my inseams pressing on the sides of the seat over here. At a weight of 230 kg, it's quite heavy, but in the maxi scooter category, it's pretty typical. Uh. And the seat how it's an 8cm, I think Vodagi Challenge Riders won't have issue and it doesn't seem too wide like, when I'm sitting on it. There's actually little slots for your legs to comfortably stand on the bike and I think Vodagi Challenge Riders wouldn't have any issues at all. Lah. So sitting on the bike like this, the floorboards are very, very huge, okay? You can position your legs forward like this, backward like this, in between like this no issue at all tall riders don't have any issue at all they wouldn't hit uh, this part of the bike over here after riding it for a while you do tend to hunch your back as if riding any scooter so do straighten your back from time to time but otherwise it's pretty much okay it's pretty much a comfortable ride and it's a very nice ride as well and up next we come to the design of the bmw ce4 and unlike its predecessor the c evolution which retains much of the typical C-series scooter outlook like the C400X and the GT, uh, the CE04 is certainly something different from what we've seen on the streets thus far. It derives its styling from the concept link scooter but made road legal including the addition of mirrors and rear license plate mount. It has a very futuristic look. BMW says they very much want to capture the aesthetics of the Blade Runner movie. But for me, it's very much reminiscent from the Boros cycle as featured in the movie Akira, uh, the 1988 anime. Angular scratch off lines gives off a modern feel. The illusion of floating panels in the bodywork, bench seat, adds to the futuristic touch. But despite that, its front end very much retains the BMW C-Series scooter design language. Lah. Especially in its flaring and headlights. This is of course brings in the CE04 in line with the rest of the C-Series of scooters. You may notice this small little windshield or its proper name, windscreen actually. It may look ridiculous but there's actually some wisdom to why the windshield is designed like that. The CE04 is meant to be an urban scooter with the capability of handling start-stop traffic, congested roads. So there's no reason for the CE4 to be riding at high speeds as its battery will drain quickly. Also, the windscreen's purpose is to deflect the wind as opposed to offering wind protection. Thus, a taller windshield will add more resistance to the bike as opposed to deflecting the wind and affecting the overall range of the CE04. Battery is housed at the bottom, somewhat similar to a Tesla. This helps to improve the center of gravity. We got a futuristic style bench seat right here. There's actually a backrest option with a bump in the middle called the Backrest Seat Pro. 
we got a forge side stand over here very beautiful very nice okay and when it's kicked down it automatically engages the parking brake and there's also a main stand for the ce04 which is usually an option for most bmw models we got a cross side mounted rear motor shock over here single sided swing arm and a rear disc fill some riders don't really like this look there's been a lot of complaints online on this but for me i think it has a nice uh, futuristic touch to it lah. but despite all the futuristic looks on the ce04 i cannot help it but to observe that the rear pillar foot pack looks like a typical foot pack as what you'd see on any other motorcycle <laughs> Which I must say that it really spoils the futuristic lines and design of the bike. <laughs> Why BMW? Why? <laughs> right guys, so up next we come to the handlebar, handlebar controls and the gauge cluster. So as you can see, the handlebar itself looks like a typical scooter, uh, kind of laid back like the Honda NM4. And if you're familiar with BMW GS riding controls or BMW bikes in general, the riding controls may feel similar. Lah. It even has the multi-controller as on the BMW GS. And because of the plastic cladding, right, uh, mounting of accessories is going to be a bit difficult. You may have to use the mirror mounts to put your cord lock, lah, phone mount, lah. and in the case of the IU unit, it's mounted to the mirror itself. Okay, so for the riding controls to the left over here, okay, we got the standard BMW multi-controller over here. We got the high beam, low beam, and flashing lights together in one button button hazard daytime riding light switch you got the menu button to toggle the gauge cluster which we're going to come to in a bit the star button is the customizable button okay you can put any features immediately to the touch okay we got the r button which is the reverse gear bmw ce 04 has a reverse gear we got the hazard lights the horn below to right over here we got the mode button to toggle between the riding modes and the kill switch with the starter itself let's come to the tft gauge cluster which is a 10.25 inch tft display i must add uh, it's very bright and clear as day to toggle once again you can use the multi-controller or the menu button so before you start the bike it displays the battery like how many percent left and also its range and when you press the brakes and the starter button you'll hear no sound because this is an electric bike after all so it's not gonna suddenly idle or start <laughs> so the gauge cluster will change to ready with the speedometer on display okay we got the battery percentage is still there with its range uh, below and what I call the charge to power wheel uh. this is to show you while riding you know when you are playing with the throttle the power is going to be shown and when you brake or when you stop the bike uh, there's this thing called regen okay which basically feeds back power to the battery okay it's going to show that it's charging the battery uh, when you slow down or come to a stop so you basically don't need to use the brakes unless it's an emergency to stop the bike which is a pretty cool thing so once again you press down the menu and you're gonna go to settings and then you got to go to telephone media navigation my vehicle so in my vehicle there's a lot of things that you can toggle with okay press down and all of the necessary information will be displayed lah okay such as your tpms the range that's left the temperature and all that you can use the multi-controller press next Okay, and wow. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to say anything because uh, there's so much information for me here to cover. But yeah, just have a look at the amount of information that's being displayed here. Onboard computer. Wow. Trip computer. Of course, tire pressure. And service requirements. I'm not really sure how BMW Motorrad or PML is going to service this bike. But uh, I, it would be pretty interesting if we can see how they're gonna service the ce04 okay navigation media telephone settings let's, let's try going to settings okay okay we got vehicle settings oh lights okay you can toggle the lights that's interesting system settings okay we got a date and time language favorite button okay something that we've already seen in zontes bikes okay charging settings which is currently set at 10 ampere right now we can adjust it to as high as 30 ampere but the guys at uh, pml tell me to stick at uh, 10 ampere lah. and connections you can collect a cell phone your helmet passenger's helmet wow 
I would love to explore all of these settings, but given the limited time that I have with this bike, I'll just have to run it through with your information, licenses. Wow, the infotainment system is really awesome. There's a lot of things you can toggle, display, and show, and a lot of info that you can see on this bike itself. Wow. <laughs> so up next we come to storage and I know what you're thinking, you're probably expecting that the CE04 doesn't come with uh, any storage like, given that usually for electric bikes uh, the storage is sacrificed but because the designers designed the ce 4s battery to be flat at the bottom of the bike right, there's actually storage over here. <laughs> and it's an electronic lock by the way, you can hear the electronic mechanism just whirling while you press the button okay close it back we got a storage cubby over here uh, this bike needs to be turned on before you can open up the storage cubby and to turn on press over here it's an electronic lock and you can see it's very small enough to fit like your wallet your keys your phone and that's it and there's a USB-C charging port to charge on the go over here okay so let me close this up because the cooling fan is activated, okay? can get a bit noisy. We also got a 12 volt charging socket over here and a type 2 charging port to charge the CE04. So this is pretty standard across the board. Very much most of the electric vehicles use this uh, port. Uh. For this top box over here, it's actually an accessory. Both the bracket and the top box is called the Urban Vario. Specifically made and designed for the CE04. There's certain design elements that blends in the top box design with the other aesthetics on the bike. Especially the theme of these tiny tiny arrows on the bike. Of course, BMW Motorrad Singapore, they put it here to showcase the accessory on the bike. Uh. It's 25 liters actually and is actually expandable to 35 which is pretty interesting even the way of operation is also very interesting you press it here and it opens and look at this what? <laughs> oh my god that's a really interesting way for you to expand your storage wow my gosh this is really interesting now my presumption that you know BMW Model Red designed it this way so that there's less wind resistance, lah. My pres my presumption, because a bigger box will definitely have much resistance, and because of that, it's gonna deplete the battery, lah. And additionally, BMW also added in this side bag over here from BMW's Urban Collection. It's to store small items within easy reach, lah. And yeah, very nice touch, I must say. So as with such a bike, you can expect a lot of riding tech being integrated into the CE04 lah. Okay, so um, just to name a few ah. There's a keyless transponder, full LED lighting all around, four riding modes, you got road, eco, rain, dynamic, dual channel ABS by Bosch, paired with disc brakes and calipers by J1, dual front disc brakes feature a rotor brake guard, which adds a futuristic touch. Also, it's meant to deflect the wind to improve range. For suspension, we have non-adjustable telescopic forks in the front and a preload adjustable side cross-mounted monoshock in the rear. Kind of similar to what we've already seen in the Progeo XP400. Once again, we got a full color 10.25 inch TFT gauge cluster, hazard lights and a USB-C charging port for charging on the go. Okay guys, so I'm sitting on the bike like this, leaning on it. Okay, this is where the engine will usually go. Same case for the CE04, right? Usually it'll be a bit hot, but this is like... <laughs> it's not hot at all. <laughs> so that's one of the advantage of an electric bike, like, is that it's cool to the touch. <laughs> okay, so anyway, let's talk about the engine of the CE04. So being electric, this model is very small. As mentioned, it's adapted from BMW's hybrid models such as the BMW X3 XDrive 30e 225xe plug-in hybrid but the engine is slightly shorter to accommodate to the CE04's small chassis. Every drive component, the battery, the engine, the transmission, it's all developed in-house by BMW and is mounted on the chassis as opposed to the swing arm so that it helps to reduce the unsprung weight and provides additional stability lah. 
like most electric motors, there's regenerative braking or what they like to call it, regen. When you slow the bike down, it feeds power back to the battery. Lah. So I think it's not really uncommon for electric bikes. And I think if you ask me, it's very efficient and helps to squeeze out a bit of juice when you're riding or, or driving. Right guys, so horn check for the BMW CE04. Alright guys, so up next we come to the colors. Okay, so this particular bike that I'm reviewing right now is called the Advent Grande in Maligan Grey Metallic, um, which sadly has been discontinued for 2023. Also because it's my favorite, thanks to the orange accents on it. <laughs> I just love the orange accents. And for the other colors, we got light white and new currently called the Imperial Blue Metallic. So finally, we come to price, okay? So according to BMW Motorrad, PML is priced at 54,800 for the light white and 55,800 for the Imperial Blue Metallic. It comes with subsidized COE, so pricing may vary over time as the COE increases or decreases, uh, you get the idea. All the bikes come with 5-year international warranty. Additionally, for Malaysia, the price for the CE04 goes up to 59500 depending on the options and colours that you choose. So as I'm riding, I just want to mention about the suitability of electric motorcycles in the region. Um, let me compare to Singapore first. So in Singapore, with the dense urban nature of the country with the urban riding that you're gonna do with it I think the CE04 is much suited for Singapore streets as opposed to Malaysia unless you're in the city or you're in areas like KL outside of KL, outside of urban areas where everything is so spread out and you need a vehicle, a car everywhere you go the CE04 is not gonna do justice because you're going to deplete your battery trying to ride the long distances with it it's something that you need to consider I would reckon that if you're living in a landed property or condo or HDB estate with this electric vehicle charging infrastructure and your place of work also has it I think to and fro work is gonna do just fine Whew. The way it stops, there's this buzzing sound, you know, which is so futuristic. And don't get me started with servicing and all that. Definitely, it's going to be an issue. I think only certain places, authorized dealers are able to maintain or do up the CEO for. In Singapore's case, it's probably PML. With, uh, you know, if you were to probably get a GS, you can go to any shop in Singapore or Johor they'll be able to serve you but for this electric bike you need specialized mechanics specialized tools specialized <laughs> facilities that can do this bike that is another concern that I'm still doubtful uh, for the CEO 4 and also the price with such a bike how is the servicing gonna be you know will it be will it cost a bomb i mean bmw gss alone probably gonna spend like what hundreds for minor minor servicing up to the thousands for major repairs and the availability of parts and accessories don't get me wrong it's something that i'm just thinking about it might not have engine oil spark plugs and all that or a typical internal combustion engine will have but these are certain considerations that you will need to take note love if you are really serious about getting into electric vehicles and wanting the CO4. I mean maybe if Tesla owners or electric bike owners can share with me their experiences on owning such a bike or owning such a vehicle in Singapore, I think that'll be awesome. Teslas in Singapore they're everywhere. Don't get me wrong, no issue with that lah. But in Malaysia you rarely see an electric powered car. City riding, no issue, okay? And I think I only depleted like what? 7% um, of my battery and I still got 66 kilometers of range estimated by the computer. So if you're talking about fun factor, I think this should be the fun factor. <laughs> no sound, no problem, man. The talkiness of the CE04 is already enough to keep me entertained. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I'll never get bored. Oh! 
of riding such a talky bike you'll never get enough of it the g-forces just pushing down your body and look how much grip that it has right now i'm just leaning into the corner right now and wow it just grips the tarmac i'm surprised on how much uh, the CO4 can conquer these bumpy roads. It's not that irritating, it really absorbs most of the bumps and imperfections. Ooh, deep pothole over there. But I still feel fine, I still feel comfortable. And notice that I haven't been using the brakes that much too because of the regen. It's like one throttle riding and that the regen itself is gonna stop the bike. You don't even need your brakes unless you really need to use them in an emergency or you are cl too close in the vehicle in front of you okay let's do this once again <laughs> man oh man there's a lot of factors that may uh, use up a lot of the power maybe you're carrying a pillion or right now i'm heading towards the highway i predict that you know from 65 it's gonna go from 60 to the next r and r so it's gonna use up a lot of power it's not kind of bike you will want to go very fast in BMW themselves they've specifically said it uh, is the kind of bike you bring out in the city streets it's an urban mobility machine so they've admitted that the CO4 is not the kind where you bring to the highway lah. but regardless you're still gonna whack the bike anyway <laughs> okay, that's enough for me. <laughs> We're not gonna go faster than that. <laughs> In the highway, you see, already, what did I tell you? 59 kilometers left of range. So it depletes very fast when you're riding on the highway. This could be due to the wind resistance. Uh, the fact that you are going at a very high speed also regen is barely involved when you're riding on the highway because the CO4 is consistently using up its power you know uh, if you're behind a truck uh, <laughs> the range is improved slightly because you're like drafting the truck <laughs> and you're not using as much power as you do without a vehicle in front of you because you're just drafting in front of the truck uh. so let's do it one again <laughs> yeah Maybe yeah <laughs> but you're riding the CO4 it's not to go fast it's not supposed to go on long distance tour point A to point B to and from work charging points all around you I feel that it's gonna be do justice lah. but I have so much questions for other aspects on riding an EV and owning it whether it's able to take on the weather I mean weather is also another factor uh, if it gets too hot the battery is gonna deplete very fast so that is something to consider also wow i mean something that i just thought of just now <laughs> i mean been doing a bit of research on evs i have to say for the, for the past two days i mean the ceo for i'm very satisfied with it people do approach you and ask you what the heck is this and i just say it's an ev <laughs> you know, i just thought that it'd be funny you know to stop by a gas station <laughs> <laughs> and just park the EV next to a gas pump it's gonna be so funny let's take a picture <laughs> oh man this is so ridiculous okay guys so I just finished um, charging the CEO4 just now it was like I think 48% 2 hours and 10 minutes to fully charge it to basically remove the plug just press the bike over here and basically remove it lah uh, that's the way then you see it's fully charged already just now it's actually 42% okay so right now just finished training right so just wiping off the bike okay 2 hours and 10 minutes of charge actually not too bad lah huh? now I have 108 kilometers of range Okay guys, so I've been fortunate to have the BMW CEO4 for the past three days and if you're like me, you have never ever ridden an uh, electric motorbike before and this is the very first time you are riding an electric motorbike uh, you are in for a surprise your first thing you're gonna notice is that it's a very quiet ride there's basically no engine noise no starting noise no nothing <laughs> basically what you hear 
it's just the sounds around you lah, like birds, the car idly next to you, engine sounds from the other motorists, and all you get from this is just this futuristic zoom that it just emits as you cruise down the road. The handling is surprisingly great. Okay, it doesn't feel cumbersome at all. It feels like a normal uh, maxi scooter, if you ask me. And the performance-wise is damn good. Talk especially, yeah. Who zero to like what sixty or even eighty is like very quick. You can feel. Like, if you've seen all those Tesla videos where people sit on it and they just floor the throttle. Uh. <laughs> it's, that is what I'm feeling uh, with the CEO 4. It's basically the same damn thing. Riding it is a culture shock. Uh. There's none of the bells and whistles that usually standard motorcycles will come with. All you get is a nice, quiet ride which is very comfortable and nice and futuristic and there's no tailpipe. It's not hot. See, I'm like touching the engine right now. It's not hot at all. <laughs> when you are riding an electric bike for the first time, it's a whole nother level. It's a whole new experience, if you ask me. I can go on and on and on about how different it is, how nice it is to ride, how futuristic it looks, how well this thing handles and how it outperforms the gas bikes uh. but this video isn't gonna end okay so shortcomings for the ceo4 the range of 130 kilometers um, is a bus gill this limits the ceo4 to simply being a commute bike something that you probably bring to and from work at the grocery store definitely not suited for food delivery. The charging times itself is gonna kill you. It's gonna take about 30 minutes to an hour and you're just gonna waste time. So definitely food delivery is out of the question unless the range is increased, of course. It's not like a power bank whereby you can plug it and then charge on the go. You have to charge it at a charging station. You're definitely gonna waste some time just to wait for it to finish charging. Charging infrastructure, I personally feel, is still in its infancy in Singapore and the region. Range anxiety is a real concern, guys. I mean, I've had this bike yesterday. I've been running it around. And all I can say is I'm worried that I cannot find a charging station to charge at. And I didn't really fully 100% immerse or enjoy myself on the CO4 while I was reviewing it and riding it around. The range anxiety is just there at the back of my mind. Even though you know that, you know, you're not going to go very far. And to see the percentage drop even further due to like what wind, or the weather, or the road conditions. The range varies. It doesn't really follow 100% on what is left according to the TFT gauge cluster. In Singapore, there's still some progress. I've noticed that most of the HDB car parks nowadays, there are EV charging points, but not all. It's progressively being built. Now, BMW has specifically said that the CE4 is an urban scooter. It's really most suited for densities where slow cruising speeds are the norm. But you know, regardless, <laughs> wherever you go, whatever you do, the CEO4 is head turner. Stopping by the traffic light, people are gonna look at it. You stop at a gas station, well, <laughs> you stop to park your bike, people will look at it, ask you about it. And I think some of them are afraid to ask me la, what is it la. <laughs> so it's really a head turner wherever you go. I think that's it from me. A really lot of things to say about the CEO4, but I don't really want to make this video unnecessarily long, and I think I've gotten all the points that I need across. So once again, huge thanks to BMW Motorrad Singapore, Performance Motors for loaning me this bike for the review. You guys can check out this bike, and test, also test ride. They offer test ride for the CEO4 at the Alexandra showroom. Very soon, they told me they're gonna move out from there to a new location. Uh, so, hopefully this video comes out in time. That's it for the vlog. And we'll see you guys in the next one.